again, my little yarnivores and spiderettes. Fiber Spider back again with another tutorial just for you. Today we're going to be doing a little bit of knitting. Yep, very simple stitch that I think you guys are going to like. This is the stockinette chevron stitch. Good for scarves, wraps, blankets, what have you. And I'm going to give you the multiples so that you can make this as wide or as narrow as you want to. And it's only a two row repeat. Very simple once you get into the groove. And of course, I'm going to be doing several repeats so that, you know, it's nice and clear. So first things first, let me back it on up here. All right. Now, for this particular piece that I'm currently working on, uh, I used do 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 do. This is Lion Brand ice cream big scoop in the colorway of do 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 parfait. Now I don't know if they still make this particular colorway. It's been in my stash for quite some time, but I thought that this colorway really makes this stitch shine. My goodness. Um, also, for those of you that are not familiar with this yarn, it is a weight of three and you have some pretty good yardage. It's over a thousand yards and it's acrylic. And so with this particular swatched, I use, let me see, I believe these are size eights. Uh, yep, size eight five millimeter. Of course, use whatever works best for you. And I decided to do a little bit of experimenting with the same stitch, but using two different colors as well. I want to show you what I've been playing around with. Now, this is a swatch utilizing two different variegated yarns, well, ombre yarns. This is Red Heart Super Saver Ombre in, I believe it is the, the purple and the real teal, if I'm not mistaken. And you might think to yourself, oh my God, you have a ton of ends to sew in. Not so, actually. What I did was I would do two rows of one color. So going back and then forth and then swap colors, then go back and forth swap colors carrying my yarn up the side mm-hmm yep really really quite a great trick so that you don't have to sew in quite so many ends and actually I did a tutorial on this technique using I believe it was Noro yarn and so if you want uh, some quick stripes to accentuate the pattern yep you can totally do that I'm gonna put a link to that uh, in the description box down below. So, you know what? Let us get started with the actual stitch here. Now, I'm not going to cast on, but I'm going to explain all the little details. Alrighty. Alrighty, so first things first, the number of stitches for your cast on. Now, what I did was a knitted cast on. I'm going to put a link to that in the description box down below. It's one of my favorites. Um, and what you need is a multiple of 14 stitches plus an additional two stitches. Now that's for the selvage edge, which is going to be done in garter stitch, all knits. And so for every multiple of 14, it creates one of these panels all the way across. Now I did four of them. One, two, three, and four. So that's four times 14 plus my additional two. That comes to 58 stitches. And of course, yes, make this as wide or as narrow as you want to. So keep in mind that because this is a, a chevron, that there is a little bit of a sort of an accordion effect going on. It's not your typical straight edge. So you may need more stitches than you would normally need if you were just doing a straight edge. Okay. So what I would suggest, of course, is do a swatch first with say one, you know, one to three uh, multiples of 14 to figure out what width you would need for 
you know, the ultimate finished width that you're going for, you know, like a blanket or what have you. So cast on your multiple of 14, add an additional two, and we'll get started. Okie dokie. So the first row that we're going to be doing is on the wrong side of the piece. Reason for that is because by doing a row of purl stitches, it really opens up the cast on and makes it a lot easier for the, the, the fun stitches that we're going to be getting into on the next row. And I'm not going to be using the row counter like I normally do because it's just a two row repeat. So on the wrong side of the piece, the first stitch and the last stitch are always knit, regardless of whether it's the front or the back. Right side, wrong side, always the same. The first stitch and the last always knit. So going in with a knit stitch and then going to purl the rest of the stitches until the very last stitch, which is going to be a knit stitch. And that's really all there is to the, the wrong side rows. Very, very simple. And it's quite nice because every other row of your piece, it's kind of like a little mini vacation. You're just doing purl stitches not a big deal. You can go on autopilot. Now, the the front facing side, the right side, that, well, yeah, you need to pay a little bit more attention. It's not that difficult once you get the hang of it, but you do want to pay a bit more attention. And I'm also going to show you a couple of tricks to figure out where exactly you are within the pattern so that if you get lost, you know, you won't be lost for long. How about that? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to purl my way across the rest of this row off camera. And when I reach that last stitch, I'm going to knit that stitch, turn my work, and I'm going to show you how you can do the right side of this particular piece. All right. So I will be right back. All right, now for the fun stuff. And as you can see with our stitches here, uh, this first one has a purl bump because we knitted the last stitch in spite of all the rest being purls. And that is, like I said, that's what's gonna create this nice edge on the side here. So to begin with, going to knit the first stitch as always, and then we're going to get into the repeat. So let's knit this first one. And basically what this boils down to is increases and decreases. So the first stitch is always a, a knit stitch. Then we go right into an increase. So that's going to be what's called a KFB, a knit front and back. So going into the front of the stitch, and going as if to knit, but leave that stitch on the needle. Then holding it, going around the back, and then knitting into the back of that same stitch. And pull it off. And so we turned one stitch in to two stitches. Now you'll notice a little bitty bump right there, and that actually is going to help us out later. Okay. So from here, after doing your increase, knit four, one, two, three, and four. Now we need to decrease twice. There are multiple ways of doing this. 
However, instead of doing a double decrease, we're going to do two decreases separate. The first decrease is an SSK or a slip slip knit. So to do that, we're going to slip these next two stitches separately knitwise. So slip and slip. And then with your left needle going in through the front of both of those stitches, going to knit those two. And there, that's our first decrease. The second decrease is going to be knitting two together. So these two stitches right here, just going in through both of those knitwise. And then knit four. One, two, three, and four. Okay. Now you'll notice where we did our decreases, they sort of look, you know, like they're joining each other, that they're sort of converging with each other. Um, and then we have our four regular knit stitches. Now we need to do two increases back to back. It's two decreases, four stitches, then two increases, then four stitches, then two decreases, and so on and so on and so forth. And that is the, the repeat that we're going to be doing. So it's the decreases separated by four, then the increases separated by four. Now the increases, it's going to be two KFBs back to back. So let's get to that. So this next stitch, going to do a KFB. So going into the front, pull up that loop, then going around the back of the same stitch, And pulling up that loop and off. Okay, and you'll see that little bump right there. Then next stitch, another KFB. So going into the front with the regular. And then into the back. And off. And again, you see that little, it almost looks like a pearl bump. We didn't pearl, but it's like a pearl bump. And then going to knit four stitches once again. One, two, Three and four. Now, as opposed to these decrease stitches sort of converging together, we have our increases. And so if you look closely, you can see what looks like little pearl bumps. So after that pearl bump, we have four stitches. It's a great way of uh, identifying where you're at. Okay, so these were the decreases. Sorry, the increases. Pardon me. These were the increases. We did our four, so now we need two decreases back to back because you can see our stitches are converging. And also, there is a, a slight bit of laddering here, which makes it easy to identify where you're at. So it's going to be these two and these two. Let's do, let's do these two first. So the first two, it's an SSK. So slip, 
slip and then through the front, knit those two. And then knit the next two together through the front there, knit wise. and off. Then knit the next four stitches. One, two, three, and four. All right, making some good headway. Okay, so back here we have our two decreases, then we did four regular ones. Now we need to do two increase stitches, two KFBs. So through the front, pull up a loop, then through the back, Pull up a loop and off. Now, I strongly recommend that when doing your KFBs, try to go a little bit on the loose side because they can be rather tight. I speak from experience. So we did one KFB, we need one more. So through the front, pull up that loop and then through the back. Pull up that loop and off. Four regular knit stitches. One, two, three, and four. Now we need to do our two decreases. So that's an SSK. Slip. Slip. And then through the front. Knit those two off. Whoop. There we go. And then knit the next two stitches together. Okay, so we've got our decreases done. Knit the next four stitches. One, two, three, four. Okay, then we need our increase. So KFB in the front. and then in the back. And then in the front. And in the back. Okay, knit four. One, two, three, four. 
four. Okay, and then we need to do our two decreases because again, you can see our stitches sort of converging together. So slip, slip, knit, slip, slip, and then through the front. Then knit the next two together. Knit four stitches. We're almost to the end. So knit four. One. Two. three, and four. Now, at the end, you should have two stitches. The second to last one, we're going to be doing our final increase because at the beginning of the row, we did a knit and then a KFB. Well, we need to finish the same way. So, going to do a KFB and then knit the last stitch. So second to last, do the KF and the B, the back. There we go. And then last but not least, knit that last stitch. And there you go. So then you would flip your work to the wrong side and you would knit the first stitch, purl all the way across until you reach the, the end and you would knit the last stitch. Then you would turn your work and do the, the fun row once again, which as a quick recap, would be knit, KFB, knit four, do a, uh, a slip slip knit, a knit two together, knit four, KFB, KFB, knit four, slip slip knit, knit two together, knit four, KFB, KFB, knit four, slip, slip, knit, knit two together, knit four, KFB, KFB, knit four, slip, slip, knit, knit two together, knit four, KFB, knit. I hope that makes sense. So basically, like I said, it's really just a matter of increasing and decreasing at regular intervals. Mm -hmm. And you just keep repeating uh, the wrong side row and the right side row as long as you want to until your piece is big enough. Alrighty, my dears. So that's going to conclude today's tutorial on the stockinette chevron stitch. As far as the, the bind off, me I used the stretchy bind off, and the reason why is because of the zigzag chevron of the edges. I find that that works out rather nicely. I'm going to put a link to that in the description box down below as well. So yeah, that's all you have to do is just the, the two rows, the wrong side, knit the first and last stitch, purl all the rest, and then do the, the fun, the fun row. <laughs> which really isn't that bad once you get the hang of it. And there you go. So listen, I really hope that you enjoyed today's video. And if you did, please give a little 
thumbs up button down below. You know that I appreciate your appreciation. And please tell me, what do you think you might do with this stitch? Some sort of fabulous wrap, a lovely blanket for somebody you love? Let me know. What kind of colors, too? Always curious. And you know what to do until next time, right? I want all of you to stay inspired, stay caffeinated, stay stitching, and please stay safe. Take care of yourselves and each other, and I will see you in my next video. Bye for now, everybody, and have a great day.